I'm not going to compete with that. There's too much going on. And <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you so much. I so haven't, do you. I, I haven't seen you in a while, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm seeing you on our final season. You, uh, your first time on the show was season three? Wow. Was it? For Rent, right? Yeah, yeah you were singing. It was. Uh, that was in New York, though. Yeah. Yeah. I was so excited when I got to come on again and like do it here and have the whole dance and the whole movie. Yeah. Because this is one of my favorite things about this show. Yeah. Y'all look so good. Don't they? Yes. You look all gussied up. Uh, I know that you don't, uh, you live in the country now and I guess you don't dress that way in the country. Absolutely not. <laughs> so what made you move to the country and, uh, and what's that like? Are you a, like at heart a country girl? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up camping and going upstate and you know, that was just one of the things my family and I do. We've always wanted to have our compound, do our off grid living. That's all I watch is those shows with my dad. and. Um, you know, I grew up in construction. I was in an abandoned building, so just like just being creative and making your home is so beautiful. So I've got a property with multiple houses on it. My dad's in one, my mom's in the other because they're divorced, <laughs> but we're so close-ish. And um, it was, you know, we've talked about it forever, but after this pandemic and being so kind of cooped up together, it was like, this is the time to, to make it happen. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, you drove across country. That was one of the things you did during the pandemic. Yeah. That you actually physically drove? I drove the bus, yes. It was the only thing that I could rent at the time. And uh, my dad didn't want to fly. He just had his pancreatic cancer surgery and was recuperating from that. So I ended up driving him across country. And he gave me one of the best compliments ever because when we landed there, upstate New York, he said I could probably fly a plane because it was a 29 foot long, 13 foot tall bus. Had you driven a bus like that before? No, I had not ever done that before. I had Popeye arms by the time I got him cross country. <laughs> did you do eight and four or did you do? Eight and four, you yeah. Did? Um, now wait four. a minute, did you, so you had to learn how to drive that and get a special license for that, I assume? No, 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 no. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have to have a special license Apparently to drive? Not. You'd Apparently have to not. know how to turn a certain way that's a bigger thing than a car. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm good with cars. I just recently had a crazy flat tire that just happens. My back right tire exploded, like obliterated. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And I ended up making it a whole Insta story thing because I normally am so bad about that, but I didn't mess up my nail, which I was so proud of myself. And I made a whole video because um, I figured people might need to know how to do that. Good for you. Uh, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, and and I, you've got so much going on. Fashion week. Um, you have a fashion line, yep. it's sustainable clothing, yeah. and you won an award for sustainability, right? Yes, we have CFDA Sustainability Award. This is my partner, Brima Urwia. This is our recent show that we just did. Last year, because of the pandemic, we ended up doing our, showing our collection by having, we're, we're based in Ghana, so we had all our seamstresses and tailors front row in our factory being able to see everything, and that's how we shared it. And then this year, it was on 9-11 that we showed, so we ended up having a Farsi singer and a piece that was done that from sounds that were picked up right after 9-11 20 years ago. 20 years ago, and my friend Sarah Jones did a poem and spoken word piece. We had dancers. Like, we always make it a real celebration Beautiful. of culture and heritage and um, sustainability and ethical fashion. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And let's talk about, we have a little bit of time before we go to break, because I want to talk about uh, Dope Sick, but, but your, your new movie that you are producing, This Is Not A War Story? Yes. Okay, you want to tell everybody about yes. that? Yes, so This Is Not A War Story is directed, uh, performed, written um, by my friend Tali Lagasse. I met her when she was 15, I was 16 years old. Um, and we always said we we're gonna work together. And this is our second film feature that we've done. And this is about moral injury and veterans who are coming back from war and committing suicide and astronomical numbers. S veterans kill themselves, seven 17 veterans kill themselves every single day. And that number is actually quite, quite low because that doesn't count people who've been discharged dishonorably or people who don't sign up for their VA benefits. Um, and it's due to going out and fighting wars that disenchant them or occupying lands. They're killing people, they're being told they have PTSD, and it's like, it's not a disorder to have post-traumatic stress from going over there and having a stressful situation happen that didn't need to happen. Right. Um, so this film is talking about Frontline Arts as an organization, so Talia worked with all of these veterans to write it out, and uh, they, t they tear up their uniforms, they make them into paper, and they turn them into art to create community 
and to stop this horrible epidemic of people committing suicide. This is not a war story. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about Dope Sick. We come back. We'll be right back. We're back with Rosario Dawson, and uh, Dope Sick is on Hulu, and it is, uh, I, I tell everybody about it because not only is it beautifully done, it's hard to watch, but it's important to watch because it's a story that needs to be told. People need to know about how this opioid crisis started, mm -hmm. um, and it's affected your family. Yeah, I, I've, I have a family member, a cousin who's no longer with us. He got a prescription of OxyContin, and it just took him down the heroin route, got divorced, didn't get to raise, properly raise his kids. Like, we shot this in Richmond, Virginia, during the pandemic, before the vaccines and everything were out. Everyone was so passionate about making it happen because everyone had a personal story. Yeah, I think it, everybody does know somebody, or if it's twice removed, we hear about, you know, somebody being affected. So, um, so Giuliani's involvement, uh, involvement in this, which is really interesting, because your yeah. character goes thinking, I'm going to be able to get to somebody and talk to somebody, and... He's working for Purdue Pharma. I mean, the, the chess moves that this company and the, and the Sackler family have made during this whole time was so smart. I mean, it was right after 9-11, everyone thought that you know, he might be president or something like that, and or just very, he just connected, and people were just looking out for their jobs oftentimes. And I, what I love so much about Dope Sick is that it highlights so many of the heroes who were, could not be bought who were not just looking out for their own skin, who dedicated themselves to making a difference and an impact. When you watch this film and see how many years this has been going on, and it still is. I mean, the Sackler Act is sitting in Congress right now, and they're hoping to be able to pass it so that the Sacklers can actually be held liable personally because they're hiding behind bankruptcy from Purdue. They're actually going to be richer after it all. It's crazy. It's, it's a crazy story, and I yeah. can't believe I, I didn't know that part of it. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. All right, well, it's called Dope Sick, and I highly recommend it. Like I said, it's hard to watch, but it's important to watch. It's available on Hulu. This is Not a War Story is available on HBO Max. We'll be right back.